What's going on guys? I'm Tommy Nichols. You're watching Blue Collar Voice. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody had a wonderful day. Uh, I posted up a video yesterday of some Santa Rosa County stuff. Go check it out when you get a chance. Um, today, we're back at it. Another American Badasses, The Facts. This one, General Fighting Joe Wheeler. I think you're really going to like it. We're going to do it just like the last one. I'm going to hit you with some facts. We're going to roll through it. Are you guys really going to like it? Anyways, this video today, i got to give credit to Daddy O's Tire Shop. It's in Milton. Uh, it's 6063 Dogwood Drive. You can give them a call at 564-4308. It's 850-564-4308. Go check them out, guys. I had to go over there today. There was some awesome folks. Very helpful. Very polite. They were quick. Got me in. Got me out. No problems. And some awesome pricing right there, guys. Uh, and most of all, it's a local-owned business. You know how I feel about small businesses, especially in wonderful Santa Rosa County. But anyway, guys, sit back, relax, and take a ride with BCB. Let's get it. jump right into it so here we go major general joseph wheeler was a noted cavalry commander who served in the confederate army during the civil war 1861 to 1865 and in the u.s army during the spanish-american war in 1898 he was a native of georgia he was largely raised in the north and attended west point electing the side with the south during the civil war wheeler gained notoriety as a cavalry commander with the army of tennessee Serving in almost all of its major campaigns, he became its senior cavalry officer. Winning a seat in Congress after the war, Wheeler volunteered his services when war with Spain was declared in 1898. Given command of a cavalry division in 5th Corps, he took part in the Battle of San Juan Hill and Siege of Santiago. He remained in the Army until 1900. American badasses at its best right there, guys. Fighting. Joe Wheeler. This guy went and served his cause he believed in in the Civil War, got elected, politics, gave it up, went to defend the country, the war with Spain. Some fast facts about Mr. Joseph Wheeler. His rank was Major General in the Confederate States and Major General in the United States. His service was in the Confederate Army and the United States Army. His nicknames were Fighting Joe and Little Joe. He was born September 10, 1836 in Augusta, Georgia. He passed away January 25, 1906 in New York City, New York. His parents were Joseph Wheeler and Julia Knox Hall. His spouse, Daniela Joan Sherrod. He had several children, Lucy Louise Wheeler, Annie Early Wheeler, Ella Wheeler, Julia Knox Hall Wheeler, Joseph M. Wheeler, Caroline Peyton Wheeler, and Thomas Harrison Wheeler. He served in the Civil War and the Spanish-American War. He is known for the Battle of Shiloh, the Battle of Perryville, the Battle of Stones River, the Knoxville Campaign, the Atlanta Campaign, the March to the Sea, the Battle of Bentonville, and the Battle of San Juan Hill. In Joe's early life, he was born on September 10, 1836 in Augusta, Georgia. Joseph Wheeler was the son of a Connecticut native who had moved south. One of his maternal grandfathers was Brigadier General William Hall, who served in the American Revolution and lost Detroit during the War of 1812. Following his mother's death in 1842, Wheeler's father encountered financial difficulties and moved the family back to Connecticut. Despite returning north at a young age, Wheeler always considered himself a Georgian. Raised by his maternal grandparents and aunts, he attended local schools before entering the Episcopal Academy in Cheshire, Connecticut. Seeking a military career, Wheeler was appointed to West Point from Georgia on July 1, 1854, though, due to his small stature, he barely met the Academy's height requirement. There's a reason the man, one of his nicknames was Little Joe. But, as we all know, height doesn't mean anything. All you gotta do is look back through history. Look at all the short-statured folks have done huge things. 
His early career. While at West Point, Wheeler proved to be a relatively poor student, and he graduated 1859, ranked 19th in a class of only 22. Commissioned as Brevet Brevet Second Lieutenant, he was posted to the US, first U.S. Dragoons. This assignment proved brief, and later that year, he was ordered to attend the U.S. Cavalry School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Completing the course in 1860, Wheeler received orders to join the Regiment of Mounted Riflemen, 3rd U.S. Cavalry, in the New Mexico Territory. While in the Southwest, he took part in campaigns against Native Americans and earned the nickname Fighting Joe. On September 1, 1860, Wheeler received promotion to second lieutenant. See, a lot of people mistake where he got the name Fighting Joe from. Some people think he got it in the Civil War, and some people think it came in the Spanish War. No, he got it while defending a woman that was had just given birth in the New Mexico Territory from natives that were attacking. Joining the Confederacy. And by the way, guys, I got to give credit to Thought Co. They did an amazing job right here. They broke it all down and made it made my job a heck of a lot easier. So, big props to them, guys. Joining the Confederacy. As the secession crisis began, Wheeler turned his back on his northern roots and accepted a commission as a first lieutenant in the Georgia State Militia Artillery in March 1861. With the beginning of the Civil War the following month, he officially resigned from the U.S. Army. After brief service at Fort Barrancas near Pensacola, Florida, Wheeler was promoted to colonel and given command of the newly formed 19th Alabama Infantry. Taking command at Huntsville, Alabama, he led the regiment at the Battle of Shiloh the following April as well as during the Siege of Corinth. Fort Barrancas means a lot to us right around here, considering we're right outside of Pensacola. I've been there many a times. Back to the cavalry. In September 1862, Wheeler was shifted back to the cavalry and given command of the 2nd Cavalry Brigade in the Army of Mississippi, later the Army of Tennessee. Moving north as part of the General Braxton Bragg's campaign in Kentucky, Wheeler scouted and raided in front of the Army. During this period, he incurred the enmity of Brigadier General Nathan Bedford Forrest after Bragg reassigned the bulk of the latter, latter's men to Wheeler's command. Taking part in the Battle of Berryville on October 8, he aided in screening Bragg's withdrawal at the engagement. So, as you can see, this guy, he done a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Um, so, the nickname Fighting Joe was a very good one. A quick rise. For his efforts, Wheeler was promoted to Brigadier General on October 30th. Given command of the 2nd Corps, Army of Tennessee's Cavalry, he was wounded in a skirmish in November. Quickly recovering, he raided into the rear of Major General William S. Rosecrans, Army of, the, Army of the Cumberland, in December, and continued to harass the Union rear during the Battle of Stones River. After Bragg's retreat from Stones River, Wheeler earned fame for a devastating attack on the Union supply base at Herpin Shoals, Tennessee, on January 12th and 13th, 1863. For this, he was promoted to Major General and received the thanks of the Confederate Congress. That right there is what got him the rank, and, and where he would stay until the end of it. With this promotion, Wheeler was given command of a cavalry corps in the Army of Tennessee. Embarking on a raid against Fort Donaldson, Tennessee in February, he again clashed with Forrest. To prevent future conflicts, Bragg ordered Wheeler's corps to guard the Army's left flank with Forrest defended the right. Wheeler continued to operate in the capacity during the summer's Tillahuma campaign and during the Battle of Chickamauga. In the wake of the Confederate victory, Wheeler conducted a massive raid through central Tennessee. This caused him to miss the Battle of Chattanooga in November. Corps Commander After supporting Lieutenant General James Longstreet's unsuccessful Knoxville campaign in late 63, Wheeler returned to the Army of Tennessee now led by General Joseph E. Johnston. Overseeing the Army's cavalry, Wheeler ably led his troopers against Major General William T. Sherman's Atlanta campaign, and boy, oh boy, we know what happened there with the Atlanta campaign. Sherman did a number, didn't he, folks? Mm. War as hell. That was Sherman. Though outnumbered by the Union cavalry, he won several victories and captured Major General George Stoneman. With Sherman nearing Atlanta, Johnston was replaced in July by Lieutenant General John Bell Hood. 
the following month, Hood directed Wheeler to take the cavalry to destroy Sherman's supply lines. Departing Atlanta, Wheeler's corps attacked up the railroad and into Tennessee. Though far-ranging, the raid did little meaningful damage and deprived Hood of his scouting force during the decisive stages of the struggle for Atlanta. Defeated at Jonesboro, Hood evacuated the city at the beginning of September. Rejoining Hood in October, Wheeler was ordered to remain in Georgia to oppose Sherman's march to the sea. And in that march to the sea, go back and look at it. We're going to cover it eventually, but that's where I said he coined the term war as hell. And he torched everything. Anything that was useful was gone. Uh, he wanted the Confederacy to feel the pain of war. And he sure did a good job of it. Uh, though clashing with Sherman's men on numerous occasions, Wheeler was unable to prevent their advance to Savannah. In early 1865, Sherman embarked on his Carolinas campaign. Joining a reinstated Johnston, Wheeler aided in attempting to block the Union advance. The next month, Wheeler may have been promoted to lieutenant general. However, debate exists as to whether he was confirmed in this ring. Placed under the command of Lieutenant General Wade Hampton, Wheeler's remaining cavalry took part in the Battle of Bentonville in March. Staying in the field after Johnston's surrender in late April, Wheeler was captured near Conyers Station, Georgia, on May 9th while attempting to cover President Jefferson Davis' escape. Loyal to the end. War was over. The man was still fighting for his cause. Spanish-American War. War number two for Mr. Wheeler. Briefly held at Fortress Monroe in Fort Delaware, Wheeler was permitted to return home in June. In the years after the war, he became a planner and lawyer in Alabama. Elected to the U.S. Congress in 1882 and again in 1884, he remained in office until 1900. With the outbreak of the Spanish-American War in 1898, Wheeler volunteered his services to President William McKinley. Accepting, McKinley appointed him a Major General of Volunteers, taking command of the Cavalry Division of Major General William Shafter's Fifth Corps. Wheeler's forces included Lieutenant Colonel Theodore Roosevelt, famed Rough Riders. And guys, if you ever get a chance to watch that movie, watch it. It is amazing. Um... They cover Fighting Joe in the movie as well. And in there, he catches uh, he gets, he catches something. I think it's malaria. But he wasn't going to miss it. So even with malaria, he was still fighting. So the term American badasses certainly fits Fighting Joe. Arriving in Cuba, Wheeler scouted ahead of Shafter's main force and engaged the Spanish at Las Guzimas. I know I just killed that, but it is what it is. On June 24th, though his troops took the brunt of the fighting, they forced the enemy to continue their retreat towards Santiago. Falling ill, that's what I was just saying, Wheeler missed the opening parts of the Battle of San Juan Hill, but rushed to the scene when the fighting began to take command. Wheeler led his division through the siege of Santiago and served on the Peace Commission after the city's fall while ill. Like I said, this guy, war was what he was all about. And he wasn't going to miss it over some little illness. Fighting Joe's later life. Returning from Cuba, Wheeler was dispatched to the Philippines for service in the Philippine-American War. Arriving in August 1899, he led a brigade in Brigadier General Arthur MacArthur's division until early in 1900. During this time, Wheeler was mustered out of the volunteer service and commissioned as a Brigadier General in the regular Army. Returning home, he was given an appointment as a Brigadier General in the U.S. Army and placed in command of the Department of the Lakes. He remained in the, his post until his retirement on September 10, 1900. Retiring to New York, Wheeler died on January 25, 1906, after a protracted illness. In recognition for his service in the Spanish-American and Philippine-American Wars, he was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Fighting Joe Wheeler, a real American badass. Guys, one of the reasons America became the superpower that she is. 
were because of men like Fighting Joe. They answered the bell every time and fought until the bitter end. Guys, remember, you woke up this morning in the greatest country this world has ever known. But it is up to each and every one of us to keep her that way. I'm Tommy Nichols. Thank you for watching the Blue Collar Boys. Eyes front. Shields up, Patriots. Toodles.